time to chat with uh, uh, legendary trainer Bob Baffett, whose Justify goes for the Triple Crown. Uh, he tries to win another Triple Crown after, you know, finally doing it after all the long wait with American Pharaoh. Now he's back. Bob, welcome back to the program. Thank you for a couple of minutes on what I know is a busy day. How you doing? My L, well, thank you. Um, yeah, we're uh, just enjoying. We're taking in the sights now. All the uh, work's been done. Now we're just playing the waiting game. You know, you've had a good week. I've seen you everywhere. I saw you on CNBC in the morning at the uh, stock exchange. I saw you at the Met game. Uh, you've bounced around this week. Have you enjoy? Have you taken the time to smell the roses and enjoyed this a little more than last time? You know, I, I really did. You know, last time we came in here, and uh, you know, it's still. You know, it hadn't been done, so you're always, you know, we, we thought we could do it, but you're just, you know, everything would just I'd come up second or something. So, um, so now that we, we did it, I thought, you know, if I ever do it again, I just want to enjoy it a little bit more. And so now we're, uh, you know, we're still very focused and all, but uh, I just feel that, uh, you know, I just want to take in a little of the the, the sights, and, and I've always – was was asked to do the stock market. That, that was pretty exciting. I actually really enjoyed that. And uh, just they've been really, everyone's been training as well. And the Mets throwing the pitch out, that was, the, having the draw there was exciting. So I'm just, Did you, you know, feel I'm, any pressure? Did you feel any pressure throwing the pitch? A lot of pressure because I, I know uh, New York's tough, you know, and so uh, I did not want to bounce it. I was a little high, <laughs> a little high, but uh, it was good velocity, but way high. You don't want to pull what we call a 50 cents. He came here and bounced it about 32 times to, to, to the catcher, and he never got over it. You know that? So uh, we, no, I, some I, of those, I, they no keep kid. forever. You know, they keep those videos forever and show them on, on TV forever. Oh, I know. But I was, uh, I've was i never bounced one yet, so uh, Good. I was. Give me this two things, Bob, that's come up this week. Number one, the, the uh, having the number one spot. Does it bother you to, ha- to, to have the one post? Well, I mean, you never like the one because you know you're you're loaded first. You're in there for a, a while, and you know you, the break is very important. He's got a break, and you know we've been really fortunate. We've actually drawn pretty well with this horse all through the the uh, the classics. But uh, if he was going to get the one, I, I'm glad it was now and not in absolutely. The Absolutely. I mean, that goes without with 100%. Here, it's not nearly the factor it would be in the other races, especially in the Derby. I, I 100%. The other thing, Bob, is putting a horse from another owner in the race against your Triple Crown horse. A lot of people said, why is he putting a horse against his own horse? Explain. Well, I mean, that horse was actually very... Uh, well, here's my man, Bill Belichick, coming right by here. How are we doing? Oh, yeah. I'll see you out there tomorrow. Yeah, I'm doing the radio show, and Bill Belichick just walked up. Say there hi. you go. There we go. Uh, no, he was there with, at the Preakness with us. But, um, but, but How about restoring hope and the idea of having a horse in against your own Triple Crown challenger? No, the reason he's in there, uh, Mike, is because that, that the owner, he's a very um, – he's, he's a – you know, he raises these horses, and he's a good client of mine. And we always thought, you know, the Belmont would be a good race. He's ready to go a mile and a half. And he knows he knows he's up against it with Justified. But uh, he just thought, you know, if he could run, you know, second, third, fourth, whatever, light the board. And, and you know, he's as good as some of those horses in there. So, uh, well, you know, give him a, a chance. You know, he owns the mare and stuff. But, you know, they all my – I have clients that, you know, they all want to play at the top level. But, um you know, I, I, I've run numerous multiple horses together all the time. I just wonder because of the fact that he's going for the triple. That's the only reason. Another race I wouldn't ask. The only reason I ask is because there's a little bit of history. You don't want to knock yourself from winning history. You know, if you got beat by your own horse, it would be kind of wild. Well, I mean, you know, I've gotten beat by my other horses a lot. You know, it's happened a few times, but uh, but it, it's... Um, it's it's something that I don't you know if it happens it happens but I, I just you know I just you know we want to win the race. Tell me about uh, the couple of weeks for Justify. Did ev- did he do everything the way you wanted it? Did the weeks go the way you wanted it? Is his appearance and him is he doing as well as you could hope right now? Has he lost any weight? How's he handled the, the three weeks to, to tomorrow's race? How has he handled the uh, time in between the Preakness and now? You know that that. You know that that, ex, that three weeks has really helped this horse. I mean, the the turnaround from the Derby to the Preakness was uh, 
you know, it, it didn't go as smooth because the next day he had a, uh, a he, he, he bruised his heel and his back leg. And we, so we had to go easy with him for a week and bring him in there. And it was raining. I couldn't really do much. And we got through the quickness, but he has really looked fantastic, Mike. I mean, uh, he couldn't be doing any better. Uh, he, he got two days here and he just went over the track. He just looked like a machine out there. I mean, he, he is just, he looks like he's just getting better. And so, uh, you know, and he's having to run on those wet tracks and having to gun real fast uh, and go really fast early. Now he can sort of, you know, leave there and just get in a nice groove. He doesn't have to go so fast early. Truth be told, were you extremely confident with American Faro the day before the Belmont? Did you feel like you ha- that he was going to win the next day? I, I was confident that he would run a big race. And I knew if he ran his race, he was better than those horses. And and there's the same thing here. I, I, I feel that this horse will run his race. I feel he's better than these horses. But, you know, they still, I mean, we've seen a lot of horses that were the best horse. They didn't get right. there because they just, you know, they just uh, flatten out and, you know, laid an egg or whatever you want to tell. You know, they just, it just catches up to them. And, and you don't know until you do it. And, that, and that's the thing, you know, you just don't know until you do it. But uh, I've never been one to really say, well, there's no way I can lose, you know, because, there's so many things that can go wrong, but I, I feel I feel just as good about this horse that I did with the American uh, Pharaoh. Well, that's saying a lot. It really is. We're talking with Bob Baffert. He has obviously justified looking to make racing history again, and here he is back with another one. You know, he came so close uh, to win a triple crown, and he got beat by Victory Gallop and, uh, uh, with Silver Charm, and now he comes back again. And, you know, you've come here with confident horses. I remember I had you on the day before Point Given ran, and you told me Point Given was going to run great in the Belmont. He ran unbelievably in the Belmont. This horse reminds me a little bit like him, only because... He's a big, strong horse and, and can handle, you know, he was a really disappointment. I, I really thought he'd be a triple crown horse, but for some reason, he just didn't run in the derby. He was just a little flat and just, you know, I don't know what happened. It, it was a fast pace, and we ended up fifth, and I, I, was, I could not believe he got beat. And then he came and won the Preakness, and I, the Belmont, I knew he was just, you know, he was just getting, he was just getting better. And that's why this horse here, he's getting stronger and better, and look, he looks fitter but he still you know he has to get the trap you know i could tell last time bob you've been in this scene a million times you know you just mentioned bill belichick walking by and we've watched him on super sunday a million times now be in the super bowl a million times we've watched you in these races a million times you were very emotional when you won the won the triple crown i mean you really were uh do you have those same feelings now or is it not the same because you've done it or is it still this good the second time around trying to do it again no, it does. You know why? I'm very emotional because I think of my parents because they were with me on this journey and they were with me at all the Triple Crowns and, and they weren't, you know, they're missing now from the, uh, they're gone. So I think about them. I always feel like, you know, I always feel like you need to help from somewhere and I always felt, you know, they're looking out for me still and I just, you know, I just, these races are very emotional for me because I think of all the, the good times and the people I went through it all. The classic do that to you for some reason they really they just they, they bring out <clears throat> all your feelings and i'm sure if, you know if it happens i'll be very emotional well listen everyone's excited uh i do appreciate a couple of minutes you've been great uh, these couple of weeks doing everything around here good luck tomorrow and uh, hopefully you got another one ready to go tomorrow and you have uh another great uh triumph and another great triple crown so good luck to you tomorrow i appreciate you coming on very much well thank you mike Thanks Thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. Bob Baffert, uh, who has Justify, and you heard him say he's as confident with Justify as he was with American Pharaoh. That's saying a lot. And he said, you know, listen, you know you can get racing luck. Anything can happen. Horse gets bumped. Horse didn't, doesn't do this, doesn't do that. You know, somebody carries him wide. Somebody knocks him, you know, sideways. I mean, there's a million things. That's why they call it racing luck. But he just told you that he thought that the sales has his every, every bit the equal chance. And I think he will go to the front. And this race, and you got the idea that he didn't worry about having his other horse in the race because he doesn't think his other horse can beat him. He thinks his horse is the best horse, which we know he is. The question is, will he be able to get the mile and a half? That is really the question. And when they turn for home, he'll be in front. I have no doubts when they turn for home tomorrow, he will be in front. The question is, when they do turn for home tomorrow, does he still have anything in the tank? That's where you separate the men from the boys. We'll find out if tomorrow he races off into history or becomes another 
double winner who doesn't win the Triple Crown. We've had plenty of both. We'll try to see if we have another Triple Crown uh, tomorrow with Justify. we got a lot of other stuff to do, including Ron Darling coming up in just a minute, Aaron Boone. Still got to give you the Met lineup. I already gave you the Yankee lineup. Eddie C will check in. The Mets lose more players today. Familia goes down. Syndergaard's not pitching Sunday. Boy, it just continues on and on and on for the poor Mets. The Yankees aren't going to care as they hit the field 7 o'clock this evening right here uh, on the fan. <laughs> 